Hi everyone, here is the book Amis once again, and a few days ago I finally managed to begin reading Mason and Dixon by Thomas Pynchon. I am extremely excited about this reading experience. So many people, so many Pynchon fans have told me it is their favorite Pynchon novel. I've heard scholars talk about how they cried while reading the book. I'm only a few pages in, I should get more serious with it next week, I think. And already I'm loving the experience and already I am aware of how difficult it is. It's imitation of 18th century language. It's going to make it a challenge, but I'm sure it's also going to make it an unforgettable experience. And I thought I might film a video like this one to let you know about the, some tips, some suggestions on how to read Pynchon. Because Thomas Pynchon is widely regarded as a particularly difficult writer. Some people describe him as the most difficult writer out there, maybe after Joyce, maybe even more than Joyce. Fiction and the humanities in general, in my opinion, are not the field of, you know, big statements. They shouldn't be, but I do firmly believe that he is pretty much the best writer alive nowadays and that his production especially if taken as a whole, is really up there with Shakespeare's, Dante's, those kinds of authors. I do believe everybody who likes to read, everybody in general, I think, should know his works and his approach at storytelling. And I know how challenging it can be to approach Pynchon without suggestions. So here we go with some of my tips on how to read his stuff. So first tip, Number five, know where to start. This is a very important tip because in my opinion, and I'm not the only one I think, Pinchon's production is very different in its early stage, its first three novels, V, Crying of Lot 49, and Gravity's Rainbow, and in its later stage, From Vineland On. The first novels are much more difficult in my opinion and much less rewarding on a merely page-by-page -page level. They might be even more rewarding globally, taken as novels in general, but they are not as pleasurable as reading experiences, in my opinion. And in fact, I do love Pynchon to bits, but I admit that I love his late novels, especially Against the Day, Inherent Vice and Bleeding Edge much more than I love his first books. Most people start with Pynchon with The Crying of Lot 49 and it's easy to see why. It's less than 200 pages long. Pynchon himself said that it is a short story that was published as a novel for some reason, whereas the rest of his production is generally made of huge bricks of books like this ones. So I see why people begin there, but I do not think that that is a good starting point unless you are start studying The Crying of Lot 49 for an academic module, you are studying it at the university level, because in that case your professors are going to explain the book to you and that's fine. If you're reading Pinchon for pleasure, I believe that novel is incredibly difficult on a page-by-page -page level and that you should start elsewhere. I personally suggest Inherent Vice. Inherent Vice has the same atmosphere and some of the same concerns of Crying of Lot 49 and the same setting, California, in, well, not really the 60s. Inherent Vice is set in the, let's say, early 70s. But it is extremely pleasurable, super fun, incredibly funny, and it also has a movie. So if you didn't get something of the book, you can watch the movie afterwards. Inherent Vice has been called Pinch on Light by Michiko no Chiela Kukatani, but I mean, to me, it's as valuable as, well, as much of a treasure chest as all these other novels. Number four, keep an open mind, and this is very difficult for readers at, at first, especially for those readers who come from more traditional backgrounds, for people who like to read popular fiction or classic fiction, but not experimental fiction in general. Pinchon's books tend to shift register and style and levels of seriousness and genres like from a chapter to the next and sometimes within the next the within a single page and to some people that might be a bit disorienting and it might be a bit too much of a mess. In Pigeon's novels you might sometimes get a straight up realist chapter about a character's struggle with his everyday life and then at one point you find a talking dog coming out for a, from a bush or something like that. Some people find that a bit disorienting as I said but you should again keep an open mind do not think you are going to read a literary or a science fiction or a horror novel. Think you are going to enjoy a wonderful narrative experience. I think that Pynchon, and especially some of his novels like Against the Day and Gravity's Rainbow, appeal especially to people who are so into narrative and into stories that they just 
can't get enough of stories within stories within stories that generate other stories that bring you to other stories. That's the power of his fiction and it's something you should embrace when reading his stuff. Tip number three, don't be scared of science. Many people, I've heard about many people who are put off by Pynchon's books because they start reading them and they're kind of okay, but then the guy starts talking about the minutiae of some scientific discussion from the 19th century and the book starts to be boring. Pynchon, allegedly, it's one of those people who cross the boundary with, between the two kinds of knowledge we have nowadays, the humanities and scientific knowledge, and in his book it throws at you a lot of scientific terminology and of scientific concepts from all possible fields, mathematics, physics, computer science, ballistics, lots of stuff. But I'm going to tell you two very important things. The first thing is that if you feel like you don't get and you don't understand the scientific discussion you're reading, don't be afraid, nobody does. Nobody but Pynchon understands what the fuck's going on in the scientific passages. Or at least only a few people have that kind of scientific knowledge and also that kind of reading culture and they also read people like Pynchon. So, well, it's supposed to be like that. Your experience is supposed to be like that. Also, because the scientific passages look like they are there for their own sake, but they are never so. When Pynchon talks about science in his books, he always does it to talk about very human, very understandable issues and situations. When in Gravity's Rainbows he talks about how a V2 rocket hits its target before you hear it coming, he does that to talk about how in the contemporary world the relationship, the philosophical relationship between cause and effect is completely broken. When he talks about, I don't know, uh, the uh, struggle between uh, vectorism and quaternionism in 19th century mathematics, it do, does that to talk about very personal conceptions of time and of redemption, of stuff like the linearity of time, the possibility to travel through time, to change one's past and one future. Very, very comprehensible things. Fun fact, I said no one but Pynchon understands the science in his books, but in the introduction to Slow Learner, his collection of short stories, he actually admits that he has no firm grasp on the concept of entropy, which is one of the concepts you find most often in his books. So really, don't sweat, the, don't sweat it with the fucking science. So, my suggestion with the science passages is the same suggestion I'm going to give you in this next tip which I'm going to call the golden rule with Thomas Pynchon's fiction, and it is a rule I have read in academic papers I have been given by my professor when I was studied at the uni studying at the University of Birmingham, which is when you're reading Pynchon, just go and don't think about anything else, just go through it. If you start considering every single sentence, every single paragraph you don't get, if you start going back to the beginning of the chapter, you'll go mad. Which is also kind of the effect Pinchon's fiction wants to give you, because it's the effect most of its character, most of its famously paranoid characters get when they're reading. The important thing is to just go through and to get what you can from the reading experience. If once you've read a huge chapter, all you get was the excitement and mild fun you got from a specific comic scene, that's fine. If what you got was a sense of confusion, that's kind of fine. It's probably worth it and it's probably related to the meaning of the book. Some people did disagree with this take and I'm not saying you should read these books while you're distracted, you should read like one line per paragraph, you should actually pay close attention to them, also because books like Gravity's Rainbow are pretty much a single discourse that flows on and on and you need to understand this like, kind of speech in sequence. At the same time, don't get stuck on difficult parts. Just go on and at the end, for, a sheer, for sheer power of accumulation, you'll realize how much you are getting of the book you're reading, even though on a page-by-page -page basis you don't realize that. That happens, for instance, with the scientific discourse in Against the Day. The first or one or two times you hear about vectorism and quaternionism, you don't know what the fuck's going on, at the end of the book you could write a fucking paper on the topic. Which leads us to the last suggestion I'm going to give you, which is very simply, follow the suggestions of people who read Pinchon better than me. I am especially referring to the Pinchon Wikis, which are an incredibly valuable instrument you should use while you're reading Pinchon. I will go as far as to say that they are in, I mean, you can't do without, if you're reading Pinchon, you can't do without the Pinchon Wikis. And one page of the Pinchon Wikis tells you, gives you a few suggestions on how to read Pinchon by 
Pinchon scholars, Pinchon fans, Pinchon experts. I put a link to that page in the description box. If you do get the chance to get your hands on the Cambridge Companion to Thomas Pinchon, which is a golden guide to all of Pinchon's novels except Bleeding Edge and to the major themes in his production, do read the coda to the book, the last chapter, by... I how to read Pynchon, and Herman gives you some of the same suggestions I've given you and even other more clever suggestions on how to approach this widely perceived as difficult writer, this so problematic, so complicated writer that at the end of the day is enjoyable as fuck, is as enjoyable as people like H.P. Lovecraft, Tom Clancy, Stephen King, it can also be most monstrously difficult, but at the end of the day, the pleasure you get while reading it is completely worth all the pain you have to put into his books. And his reading experiences are like no other experience on the, in the literary world. That's it for this 10 minute, 12 minute love letter to Thomas Pynchon. I will let you know how it goes with Mason and Dixon, of course I'll review it once I'm done with it. It's not the last novel by Pynchon I have to read, I still have to read V, and also his uh, short story collection Slow Learner, I, I think I'll do that throughout the summer, and I'll let you know how it goes with those two. Let me know about your own suggestions as far as reading Pynchon is concerned, and let me know whatever passes through your mind about the topics I've dealt with in this video. Thank you so much for watching guys, once again I will see you in the next one, bye guys.